Hi everyone. Let's go ahead and get started with cats and the dogs classification using convolutional neural network. We will be using here regularization and image data generator technique. We will be also using here augmentation technique so that we can enhance our accuracy. So in previous lecture, we had seen that our model was overfitting. So what is the overfitting? When your model starts performing better on the training, training data and it, is, it, it performs poor on the test data, then it is the case of the overfitting. And when it performs bad on the training data but good on the test data, then it is the case of the underfitting. You can see this by here as an example. In case of the underfitting, it doesn't perform well. In case of the best fitting, which is the optimum uh, way to fit that, it try to classify these classes there optimally so that it can maintain the accuracy. But in case of the overfit, your model becomes too complex that it try to manage everything on the train data set where it creates a very complex plane or very complex model and uh, classifier then it starts performing as the overfitting. So in case of the overfitting, as you can see there, these boundaries are having high variance. So you can see here with the bull eye diagram in this, when your data have very high variance, something like this and this. So in this case, if you see, this is final accuracy or this is final result. And around this result, you are getting every time your result, this side, this side and every other sides. So in this case, this model have high variance and low bias. But in this case, this model have high bias because this is outside of the actual accuracy or actual target. And uh, it is also very much distributed there. It's kind of the spreaded here. So it is having high bias and the high variance. These type of the models are the best model where you have a low variance and the low bias. That means your prediction is almost around your the target variables. So that's the that's that's the best model there. That's the optimum model. So we do not need any of these three model. We want something like this. In previous case, what we had seen in our human and uh, horse classification example, in that we saw that our model was overfitting. Now we need to avoid that overfitting in this lecture. So we are going to use here a technique of the regularization. These are the regularization technique which we will be using here L1 and L2 regularization. We will be also using here dropout in case of the deep learning. We will be also using here early stopping. You can use the data augmentation. You can use the batch normalization to reduce the regularizer to, to reduce the overfitting. So what is the regularization? This regularization is technique used in the deep learning and machine learning to prevent any kind of the overfitting in your model and overfitting occurs in your model when it fits too well on your trained data but it performs bad on the test data in this case your model cannot generalize and it may not be able to predict on unseen data this type of the regularization adds kind of the penalty in a loss function so that it doesn't make a complex model or it doesn't fit too well on training data so it performs bad so this regularization maintains that penalty so that it 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 fits your trained data in a such a way that it can perform better on the test data and unseen data these are the techniques to avoid these kind of the overfitting you can see all these techniques in this simple uh, diagram so in this simple diagram what we see there these kind of the techniques are known as L1 and L2 normalization. This is L1 and L2 normalization, regularization. Then here we have a kind of uh, the technique which provides kind of the batch normalization. With batch normalization, we would be able to uh, find out low bias and the low variance data. This is kind of a sweet spot where we we should we, where we should actually. Uh, uh, get the maximum accuracy or the better accuracy not the maximum one because the maximum accuracy can occur on the trained data but not on the uh, but but not on the validation data or the test data here is the case of the dropout so how the how, how uh, this works here you see this model 
you have here a neural network and all the nodes are connected with each other here but after doing this dropout these some of these connections are dropped randomly and uh, if these connections are dropped randomly now you see all these are not connected together and these cells are dropped there now you have here a sparse data uh, a sparse model actually so this model learns better and these type of the model avoids any kind of the overfitting in your deep learning models another technique is the batch normalization these batch normalizations are inserted in between the layers each every layers in between every layers if you insert these batch normalization it try to normalize your data in batches so that you can achieve accuracy faster your data your uh, uh, data set your, your training settles uh, uh, the faster the another technique is here uh, uh, data augmentation you have a single image and this single image is the, the single image is used to produce many other variants of the this image for example if you if, if you rotate it a little you will get this particular image if you flip it you will get this one you can do the scaling like zooming zoom in or zoom out you can also adjust the brightness and the contrast all these things you can set to increase your data set so that a little variance does not affect your model output all right perfect there are two important things about the l1 and the l2 regularization if you see this image you can clearly see that this l1 no, l1 regularization is actually touching here at the axis and uh, in l2 case in l2 normalization it is not touching any of these axes in fact this cannot touch exactly at this zeroth location so what happens here if you use l1 normalization it produces their sparsity that's mean you get the sparse solution and uh, in l2 normalization case it actually penalizes the weights so in this case sometimes these type of l1 normalization makes some of these weights exactly equal to 0 but these l2 normalization doesn't make weight equal to 0 but it do penalize the weight but it doesn't make that as equal to 0 so there is kind of the parameter which we use uh, like lambda regularization parameter it is passed to our deep learning neural network then it penalize either it penalize the weight or it make that uh, weight equal to 0 if you use L1 regularization. In case of the L2, it penalizes that weight there. This dropout case, generally what we do here, generally we select 20 to 30 percent of dropout between uh, uh, initial layers and uh, around the 50 percent of the dropout generally we use at the output layer. So this is the standard technique and uh, in, in deep learning community we have seen that this kind of the provision works in more better uh, uh, the fashion there. The, in, the, in the third step that's the early stopping. So this early stopping actually works like let's say if your model is training and your model starts overfitting. At the time when your model starts overfitting, this early stopping will stop your model learning further. Because you, once your model overfit, it performs even more badly than uh, if you stop it at the stage where it starts overfitting. So this early stopping technique is also a very good technique where you stop your model before overfitting. The fourth technique here we have the batch normalization. So this batch normalization regularization techniques normalize the input data to each layer of the network and this prevents the overfitting and improves the training speed. Because if you do the batch normalization, your uh, loss functions attains the minima uh, very fast. The convergence of your loss function is fast in case of the batch normalization uh, case. So this batch normalization is apply it in the form of the batches that means if you pass your data in the form of the batches so this normalization is done batch wise there all right so you can see that this is kind of the mini batch normalization 
all right thereafter you have here by normalizing the input to each layer batch normalization can prevent the activations of the layer from becoming too large or too small so this batch normalization also prevents kind of uh, 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 where, where your uh, activation function weights becomes very high or very less and it stops performing it as it is desired there that means uh, it 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 uh, 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 it actually uh, prevents to to either it vanish or explode during the back propagation so this batch normalization is very good technique to avoid these kind of the conditions the final uh, final one is the augmentation where you have the data generator this data generator generates different kind of uh, images of the same image like here if you see there is a dog and the various kind of the image is generated by using this particular dog if you can see there the here uh, seems like this dog was rotated a little in this case a shifting is done and flipping is also done now you can see this dog was looking at this side but in this image it is uh, it is seeing at the opposite side in this case you can also see that seems like uh, this one also uh, uh, a little uh, cropping is done here at this side that means a shifting is done there you can see there the clearly here at the tail side tail is very very near to the end of these edges here again here a uh, flip is done here and again there is a kind of zoom in is done there if you clearly see that this this image is actually zoomed in and this one is the invert version of the zoomed in images so these kind of the variants are generated by using the data generator augmentation technique so these three type of the augmentation techniques are available here from where image data generator can read the data it can read the data from the directory it can read the data from the data frame and it can also read the data where you provide it like image data dot flow and then you write your own method to read your data from any other places generally we use here directory and the data frame to read our data these are the techniques which we, we can use with image data generator to do image augmentation such as the random rotation random shift random shear random zoom and we can do the random channel shift horizontal and vertical flipping the random brightness so in this all these cases you can adjust the contrast brightness flipping shear zoom zoom in zoom out all these things you can do with the images but make sure that you apply these things only by a small amount or by small scale do not apply uh, 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 with the very large scale otherwise your image distort uh, may get uh, distorted and uh, your model uh, uh, may uh, get uh, confused with these kind of uh, overdoing of the augmentation so in this lecture we will be using dogs and the cats data set this dogs and the cats data set is available at the tensorflow data sets catalog you can click on here and it will lead you to it will lead you to the tensorflow.org datasets catalog do remember one more thing here we are using here uh, tensorflow uh, tfds that's the tensorflow dataset you can install tfds by doing tensor pip install tensorflow datasets and in this dataset you can call call this data directly dogs and the cats you can call this data directly by using its name there all right let me see here where it is image classification it has if you just call it as cats versus dogs you would be able to download this particular data so this data have total 23262 examples and it has only one split here train split if you remember in previous lectures we had two split train split and test split but in this case we are having just a train split we do not have here a test split and in this case we are also having a very large amount of the data in in previous example we had around only 1000 examples for the training and around 250 or 256 examples for the testing that was very less data and our model was overfitting but in this case uh, our model will not overfit because we are having here almost 23000 images and this is kind of the more than enough for binary classification and you can see that number of classes are here two that means it is binary classification all right 
perfect now let's go ahead and come back to our uh, google colab notebook and uh, you can start doing the code by installing tensorflow data set but before that you need to make sure that you select here a runtime you need to select a runtime of the gpu here and just save it all right so once you select a gpu runtime then you can install your tensorflow data set i'm just going to copy it from here and then i'm going to paste it here and then you can run this command it will install the tensorflow data set all right so we have successfully installed here tensorflow data set we are also going to import necessary python packages like tensorflow as a tf tensorflow data set as tfds import os and then import pandas as pd numpy as n thereafter i need to just run this cell uh, it's saying that it is unable to uh, save this file control s okay it's saving this file as well okay click on s if saving is creating any issue all right it has saved this file successfully let's go ahead and move forward and download our data so we are going to download cats and dogs data set we need to get the name of this data set from here i'm just going to copy this name from here and then come back here thereafter i need to just read this data here so i'm going to write here the data set and info like we did in previous lecture tfds dot load and then i need to provide here data set name which is the cats versus dogs thereafter i say here with info is equal to the true that's mean we also want data set information here and then i say here as supervised is equal to the true that means we want to download here data set along with its respected labels as well all right so it will download data set and its respective labels here as well it may take a while to download the data depending on your internet speed anyway i'm using here google colab so it shouldn't take much of the time and uh, once it download the data set it will store it on the default directory although it will not store it here we will be storing this data set here just for our reference so that we can uh, visualize our data set and we can know more about our data set all right wait for a while to let it finish so the data download has been done here it will store it's at the it will store this data set at the default directory here which is forward slash root tensorflow data set inside that it is storing cats versus dog do remember this will store our data set in in form of the tensorflow records it will not store it in the form of images or the jpeg files it will store it in the form of the tf records so tf records we cannot visualize it directly so for that purpose we are going to store our data set in this current working directory so for that we need to write a code here since we have only a train split here so we are going to we are going to create here cats versus dogs directory and then we will create a train directory inside that as the hierarchy and thereafter inside that we will store cats and the dogs data set so i'm going to just iterate over this data set but before that let's go ahead and see this info here so that you can understand more about the data set it says that we have name cats versus dogs full name is cat versus dog the version is 4.0 and then here it says that uh, the description of the image there are total there there are total uh, uh, around the 2300 data set and uh, 1738 uh, corrupted images are dropped in original data set it has around 25000 data set out of those 1738 data set got removed and other than that it says that the total number of classes are two here and uh, it is actually stored as image and the label that means once we iterate over this data set we need to iterate over the tuple that means the first key will be image and the next key will be label there all right let's go ahead and iterate over the data set uh, let's go ahead and iterate over this uh, info and uh, get the label name so i write here info dot features and uh, inside that info dot features now you have here a label if you write there inside these features as the label you will be getting here class labels all right and thereafter inside that if you provide here a name then you will be getting here uh, the classes names 
in fact you need to provide here a names so this names will return you a class name here we are having cat and the dog these are the two class name all right perfect let's go ahead and iterate over the data set like we had seen uh, previously it's it, we need to iterate over the tuples the first value will be image and the next value will be label because we have downloaded this data set as supervised data set i write here for i and then uh, example something like that in enumerate all right inside this again i write here inside this enumerate i write here the data set and here it is train all right so you see what happens here once you enumerate over this train data set the index will get stored here in i and this data set value will be coming here in the example so basically this example will be something uh, something like this where we will be having image and the label so this is this is the combination which we had seen in this info description earlier if you have forget that let me just show you it one more time if you just print this info you will see the data set types there so this data set key is arranged in the form of the image and the label so that part we want to see there all right so we say here image and label is equal to example all right something like that we have now in this there is the image and then label so either label the, these labels are either cat or dog and uh, uh, these labels are also referred as here 0 and 1 since we already know that 0 means cat 1 means dog so we need to store it as the class name so i write here class underscore names something like this and then you can print your class names as well all right so the first one here the uh, the first value at the index 0 is cat the second value at the index is dog there now we have image and the label which we are getting from the example let's go ahead and create here the save dir and here i say the save dir is this current directory itself thereafter i write here this current directory inside that i'm going to write here cats versus dogs and thereafter inside that i'm going to write here the train all right and then i need to provide here the label name all right so the label name i'm going to provide so inside this i need to also provide here the jpg that will be the file name and uh, in, inside this we also need to provide two things actually inside this train there will be two folder uh, dogs and uh, uh, a cats folder all right so in fact what we can do this will be something like this cats versus dogs trains and then we can uh, uh, format it with the with the label here all right so that you need to provide with class names and the label so this label having value of 0 and 1 if it is 0 then it is cat if it is 1 then it is dog it's something like that let's go ahead and print this save dir and see the first image i just break it here i want to just run it and then see what happens we are having the first one uh, first label as the dog now we need to store this dog name inside the dog folder we also need to make this directory so i write here the make dirs and then i need i, I write here the save dir exists underscore ok is equal to the true let's go ahead and run it uh, this is going to create the problem it should be the exist underscore ok and uh, this one is also creating problem in fact this will be the os dot make dirs now you should be able to see here if you refresh it we have cats versus dogs inside that we have a train inside that we have a dog we have not created for uh, uh, for the cat as of now because we are breaking it here later on we will create it for the cats as well let's go ahead and start saving the files either inside this dog folder or the cat folder for that we need to get here the file name so i write here the file name equal to save dir 
plus forward slash and thereafter I need to give here the name all right so the total file name where we will be storing our data all right so inside this I'm going to provide let's say inside the dog if we are storing then I'll be writing there the dog itself thereafter underscore and then I'll be writing its index that's mean the number of the example which index it is and then I'll be also giving here the extension of the file which I'm going to give here jpg thereafter I write here the format inside that again I need to give here this class names all right label it is something like this if you see this and here if I uh, print this file name then you will be seeing this file name let's go ahead and just run it well uh, seems like some problem is there because I have provided here uh, uh, two value but uh, that that takes two value uh, placeholder but here I provided just one value the second value will be coming from here now if you run it it should be giving you the correct result here so the file name for the first one will be the dog underscore zero dot jpg so this will be the file name for this image let's go ahead and store this image for this particular file I'm gonna just write here in uh, uh, tf dot keras dot preprocessing dot image dot save underscore img this is uh, preprocessing from the keras module I'm gonna say here file name and then image dot numpy so it takes a numpy array for to to save that image and here it have the file name so it's gonna store this file name at this particular place let's go ahead and run it then you should be able to see that file name will be created inside this doc folder all right and if you double click on double click on it you should be able to see this dog here all right perfect let's go ahead and remove these print statement and the break statement and uh, we can run this cell once again it will store every file inside dog and cats folder here inside dog folder you will be having the name of the images with the dog underscore zero inside the cat folder it will be having images name as the cat underscore its index value let's go ahead and refresh it and then see how many images are stored here you can clearly see that we have two folders here cats and the dog folder and if you just refresh it you should be able to see all the images which are stored inside this cats and the dogs here they are total around 23,000 images so it is going to definitely take some time to store all these images on your directory depending on your internet speed if your internet speed is slow it may take a lot of the time because the total download size is here almost 800 megabyte and along with that it will be also saving each of these images in your directory so anyway it depends how fast your computer is processing to store your images as well all right all right now let's go ahead and start building your convolutional neural network we will be also using here image augmentation technique we will be also seeing how you can uh, uh, how these images are processed internally so for that purpose we will be using here CNN explainer as well all right but before that let's go ahead and uh, download uh, the data in fact we have already downloaded so we are gonna uh, uh, create a data generator based on this directory so we will be flowing our uh, these data into our data generator there these are the building blocks of the convolutional neural network which we will be using in this lecture we will be using input layer convolutional layer if you see this example for your reference you will be give uh, you will be giving your model and input of the dogs or the cats and thereafter these these uh, yellow colors uh, boxes you see that these are known as the kernel here then uh, these are the convolutional neural network and with this image one more thing you see there as the your convolutional neural network becomes large in fact at it goes deeper and the deeper then uh, it creates more number of the features 
Now you can see there the number of features are the increasing here. That means as convolutional or neural network goes deeper and the deeper, then it becomes uh, uh, it, it creates more number of the feature space there. Then these neural networks or these layers are also working here to extract the features of any image or any input data. In, in the last stage, last of few stage works as the classifier here. And uh, since it is the binary classifier, that means it will be having just a single neuron there, single uh, cell there for classification of the dog or cat there. And we will be also using here a sigmoid activation function. So these cells works as the classifier in case of the binary classifier. But if you are having a multi-class problem statement, then in that case, you need to put here these cell as many classes you have. Let's say if you have the 10 classes, then you need to put here the 10 cells and you cannot use sigmoid in that case. In that case, you have to use here softmax activation function. So sigmoid works only when you have a single node at the end, at the end of your network. That means, if, if you have just a binary classifier, then you can use the sigmoid. Otherwise, you have to use the soft, softmax uh, softmax uh, uh, method there at the last. That's the activation function. All right. Let's go ahead and read our data using the image data generator. We need to first import all the necessary packages here. So I'm going to import those from TensorFlow dot keras dot preprocessing dot image import image data generator thereafter i write here from tensorflow dot keras dot layer import convert 2d and then i'm gonna get here max pooling 2D and then I'm gonna get uh, get here uh, flatten layer then I get here dense layer and then I get here dropout all right so once I get all these then I'm also gonna get here the batch normalization as well all right so we have got here convolutional 2D max pool 1D flatten dense dropout and batch normalization Thereafter, we also need to import here sequential uh, uh, method as well. So I'm going to import here from tensorflow.keras.models import sequential. Let's go ahead and run it. All right. So all the necessary methods are imported here. Now we can create our data generator here. So I write here data gen, that's the data generator is equal to image data generator. And then inside that I provide here rescale method. The rescale is equal to 1 divided by 255. That means all the image value will be divided by 255. We need to make sure that our image lies in between 0 to 1, the max value. Since all these images are 8-bit images, so 8-bit value is 255, the max value. So we need to divide it by 255 so that we can normalize our images. Then since we have just, we have just a trained data set, we need to get the validation data set out of this trained data set itself. So I write here validation split is equal to 0 0.2. That means 20% of the data will be used as the validation set and uh, some of the some of the augmentation technique I'm going to introduce in this like the rotation range. So I'm going to provide here the 10 degree of the rotation a random rotation either left or the right side your image will be rotated. So whatever the image our data generator will read will read from these dogs and the cats it will rotate these images 10, 10 degree either left or right. All right. After this, after this rotation, I'm going to add here width shift range. All 
all right so i write here width shift range is 0 0.1 and then i add here height underscore shift range in this i write here 0 0.1 so this is also going to do here a, a little width shift and this one is going to do here a little uh, uh, height shift if you remember previously we had seen here in this particular image there were many type of the augmentation sometimes it was doing uh, uh, image flipping sometimes it was doing height shift and sometimes it was doing uh, width shift for example if you see it was doing here width shift all right you see there is the this, this circle is there i mean this uh, 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 the shadow is there but in this image actually that shadow is not there so these kind of the shiftings are done here in fact that shadow is also not here as well and there is a kind of sear is here you see this image is this image seems like a little stretched if you compare this with the original image so all these methods you can use with the help of uh, image data generator so i'm using here height shift range as the 0 0.1 thereafter i'm also going to use here sear range so this sear range also will change the perspective of your image that's mean the way you look into the image that will also get changed by uh, 0.1 scale thereafter we are going to provide here the zoom range so your image will be either 10 percent zoomed in or it will 10 percent zoomed out thereafter we are going to also have here horizontal flip as well so a random horizontal flip will happen for all your images so it's going to introduce a lot of variety to your data so your data will not just limit to 23,000 data it is going to generate theoretically like infinite number of the data based on these uh, based on these random shifts in your data let's go ahead and create the train and validation data generator so i write here train generator so that we can generate the images from these data gen i write here data gen dot flow from directory and in that i'm gonna take this directory this directory so that we can uh, uh, in fact this train directory i'm gonna just copy this path from there and then i'm gonna just paste it here so this is the directory from where we will be flowing our data thereafter i'm gonna say here the target size that's mean the image size which it which it is going to load so in this i'm gonna say here 150 cross 150 that means we are going to put image size as 150 150 thereafter i'm going to say here the batch size that's mean in every batch we will be loading here 32 images thereafter we are going to also say here the class mode so this class mode says that how many uh, how many uh, uh, the classes are there in your data generator i say here the binary that's mean there is two classes this is the case of uh, this is case of the train generator let's go ahead and copy this whole thing and uh, create our validation generator we need to give everything as it is there will not be any difference in this other than subset so in this case i need to provide here subset because see this model doesn't know that for which we are creating so for this we are creating from training subset and uh, for this one i'm creating validation subset all right so if if subset is selected as the training then it's going to use 80 percent of the data for the train generator and rest 20 percent it is going to use for the validation generator so i'm going to give here its name as the validation generator all right so we have here train generator we have here a validation generator let's go ahead and run it now once you run it you will see there there are total 18611 images will be used which will belong uh, which belongs to two classes as cats and the dogs a uh, cats and the dogs and then uh, 4651 images belongs to other two i mean the same two classes which will be used for the validation 
All right, so now we are done with the train data generator and validation data generator. Let's go ahead and start building our model. All right, so we will be taking reference from this particular model. We are going to use here a, a three layer of convolutional neural network, first layer, second layer and third layer. And thereafter, we will introduce the flattened layer and then some of the dense layer. And then finally, we will put a single neuron at the end of our network with the sigmoid activation function. All right, let's go ahead and uh, combine this everything inside the sequential. So I create here model is equal to sequential. Now the sequential is functional API which takes all these uh, inside the sequential we are going to add all these layers. So you can say that sequential is working as the container for all these layers and uh, this sequential we have got in variable name as model. I'm going to add here model dot add and then convert 2D. This is the convolutional 2D. All right, inside this convert 2D, I need to tell total number of the filters which we are going to use. Now you see there total number of the filters. I'm going to use 32 filters and then I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to give here the kernel size. So I'm going to get, uh, give here the kernel size as 3. If I give just a single variable as a 3, it will automatically take it as 3 pixels in width and 3 pixels in height as well. So you don't need to give here 3 cross 3. So let me tell you once again with this image. So this is the kernel, all right? And the size of height and the width of these kernels are, uh, uh, size and width of these kernels are given there. Generally, these are a square there. So width and height of these kernels are same. And these number of features are known as the number of the filters which you provide your convolutional neural network. All right, so these parts we are going to do here. A 32 means a 32 feature map will be in the first layer. And then the kernel size is three here. All right, thereafter I'm gonna use here the activation uh, method. The activation function I'm gonna use here, ReLU activation. And then I provide here input shape. If you remember input shape was 150 cross 150. Since we are using here a three channel, so I provide here 150, 150 and three. That means we are using here a RGB image. All right. Thereafter, I'm gonna add here uh, uh, the max pool layer. So I write here model dot add. Inside that, I'm gonna do here max pooling. 2D and uh, I'm going to provide here max pool, max pooling 2D as the 2. All right. So it's going to again create width and the height of your max pool vector as the 2 by 2. So it will be uh, uh, taking the max of the 2 by 2 matrix there. Uh, it's giving kind of the error. Let me see here. Okay. The max pooling, I didn't get that. I got the max pool. You can get in fact the max pooling from here itself. Max pool and the max pool in 2D is the same kind of things. Thereafter, I'm going to provide here, thereafter, I'm going to provide here the batch normalization. So I write here model dot add and then I write here batch underscore normalization. All right, so I add here the batch normalization. We have already imported this batch normalization. In fact, it is not like that. It should be like this. Oh, sorry. All right. So we have added here the batch normalization. After this batch normalization, we are also going to add here a small amount of the dropout. So I add here the model dot add and then the dropout. And I'm going to add here the 0.2 dropout. If you remember at the start of the lecture, I told you that at the earlier stage, at the initial stage of the neural networks, generally we introduce the 20% of the dropout and at the final stage, we introduce a 50% of dropout to do the regularization in our neural network. So we are using here uh, three kind of regularization. In fact, 
we are doing the batch normalization we are using a dropout and before this we have already used the data augmentation so all these things will will, will uh, avoid or it, it will prevent your model to overfit and in fact you can achieve more accuracy using all these three uh, uh, three techniques combined together so we have built here the first layer of your uh, uh, cnn you can say here the first layer cnn thereafter we are going to create here uh, second layer cnn then in second layer i need to remove this input save from here we have got now we need to make here a 64. One more thing I told you earlier, as your neural network goes deeper and the deeper, the number of features increases. That's when the number of filters will increase. These are the general and well proven practice here. So I put here now a 64 neurons in the second layer of the convolutional neural network. I keep the kernel size same and activation method as the ReLU activation. Then I keep the same max pooling 2D batch normalization and the dropout. Let's go ahead and add the third layer. Inside this third layer, again, I need to remove this input shape because this input shape you can give at the first stage itself. Other than that, you do not need to give the input shape. Then I'm going to add here 128. General practice is that keep doubling every time you do here. Although it's not always or it's not mathematically proven, it's just a general practice. You start with the lower number of the filters and keep doubling your number of the filters there. Alright, so we have created a three layer of neural network here, three layer of CNN uh, neural network here. Thereafter, I am going to add here the flatten layer. That means we have converted our volume of this uh, uh, volume of these feature space as a single vector. Once you have done like this, thereafter we need to introduce here fully connected layers. So I'm going to add here fully connected layer, which is also known as the dense layer. So I'm going to add here the dense layer with 512 neurons. And inside this, I'm going to, I'm going to introduce the activation method again as the ReLU activation method. Once you are done with the dense layer, I'm going to introduce only single dense layer here. We have, uh, we can see here a multiple dense layer, but we don't need that many dense layer for this simple example. I'm just going to uh, create single dense layer. Thereafter, I'm going to add here a final dense layer where we will be using a sigmoid activation method. If you see with this image, we need just a single cell here so that we can classify dog and the cat. We will be using here a sigmoid activation function. All right. So I write here activation is equal to sigmoid all right all this uh, you, your model is now done once your model is done then you can just run this model and uh, if this runs successfully that means it doesn't throw any error here let's go ahead and uh, compile our model so i write here model dot summary just to see that if everything is okay and we can just uh, understand that how many parameters are there in your model we are having here these many number of parameters seems like we have a 19 million parameters in our neural network since we have introduced there's the dropout so because of that seems like uh, these number of parameters are decreased one more one more thing i have uh, uh, missed here we need to use here a dropout after the flatten layer. So I'm going to use here a 50% of the dropout here. Let's go ahead and run this model once again. And thereafter you need to run here model dot summary. All right. So we have total number of the parameter, a 19 million number of the parameters. One more thing you can see here, adding the dropout is not reducing the total number of parameter. That means the dropout doesn't affect your number of the parameters because these dropouts are something which is uh, where your model decides dropping some neurons randomly, but it keeps those neurons there in next iteration. It might pick those neurons. So essentially, it's not reducing any number of the parameters by introducing their dropouts. With this, we also see here the first layer of uh, your convolutional 2D have 896 parameters 
and then this batch normalization have total 128 parameter why so because you see the second uh, this is the first stage okay this one here the batch normalization so this one is having total 128 parameters thereafter because the shape you see there the 74 74 uh, 32 so in each of these batches it will be doing the no normalization for each batches all right thereafter this dropout layer doesn't have any number of the parameters because dropout doesn't need any parameter in any way thereafter this convolutional neural network have almost 18496 parameters and then again this batch normalization have 256 and so on in the final dense layer this dense layer is actually introducing a lot of the parameters why so because dense layers are fully connected dense layers so these dense layers create really so many number of parameters it happens because you know this platen layer also creates many number of the neurons there and the output and while connecting these many neurons with these dense layer it really creates so many number of the parameters there so these are the total number of the parameters let's go ahead and uh, compile our model so I write here model dot compile and in that I'm going to create here a loss method which is binary cross entropy. I write here binary cross entropy. This is the loss method. Thereafter I write here the optimizers is equal to Adam optimizer I'm going to use here and uh, then the matrix I'm going to keep here accuracy matrix. This accuracy matrix will be used to evaluate our model. Thereafter, I'm going to write here history is equal to model dot fit. So this history will keep our model training history so that later on we can uh, plot our model training and uh, uh, the loss loss just to understand that if our model is overfitting. Train dot uh, train underscore generator we have train generator and the validation generator so this train generator will automatically keep generating images to our model so that it can keep fitting there and the total number of the epochs here i'm going to create total number of epochs as the 100 in fact we can keep total number of epochs as 50 here thereafter i'm going to create here the validation data in the validation data we have here the validation generator once all these things are done, let's go ahead and run it. It will take a while to train your model, but before that seems like something is wrong. Okay, this metric is wrong actually, seems like. Okay, this should be the matrix actually. I'm sorry, I have been making so many typos nowadays. Okay, uh, seems like still I'm having some typo here. Okay, this optimizers again here. I'm really sorry, I'm really sorry. Uh, this is actually the just the optimizer here all right now all uh, now, now the 50 epoch training has started let's go ahead and wait for some time so that it can finish the training well so it has started the training but seems like it is taking a lot of the time we need to see that where this time is going and uh, why it is taking this much of the time let's go ahead and first verify our uh, runtime so that i need to see here change runtime it says that the gpu so if it is GPU then obviously it's okay because uh, we wanted the GPU itself only and other than that if you click on this you see there GPU RAM is 15 gigabyte but we are using just 2.8 gigabyte of the GPU RAM here. So what we can do here in fact our batch size is small. So we can increase the batch size so that this training can uh, can be increased here. So I'm going to just increase uh, our batch size so, uh, so that we can increase our training time. I'm just going to stop this. Other than that, this number of epochs, I'm also going to set it here 10 so that uh, we can uh, 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 so that uh, we can see this final training because anyway, this is just uh, YouTube uh, tutorial uh, in offline you can make it 100 or a 50 epochs let's go ahead and change the batch size here during our data generation 
at uh, this particular stage this batch size we made here 32 this one I'm gonna make here 128 batch size alright so this is kind of uh, 128 batch size uh, which is almost uh, 3 to 4 times at least around the 4 times more larger than what we had earlier let's go ahead and run it now number of batches is increased now so our model should start training in more faster way what we had earlier now you can keep an eye on gpu ram here it will take a while now you can clearly see that your gpu ram has just bumped up now it is using how much 8.8 .8 gigabyte all right so seems like still we have some uh, uh here uh, you know the sum lever to increase our batch size currently it's 8.8 .8 or 9 gigabyte seems like we can increase it a little more let's go ahead and come here increase the batch size now i'm gonna increase our batch size to let's say where it is okay it's here so i'm just gonna increase our batch size to let's say 216 okay so the 216 images will be taken at once for the training let's go ahead and run this and run this one as well now you should be able to see that your GPU RAM will go even more what we are seeing here once this training will start and it will also take here less time for the training as well. Now you can see that it has taken almost 14 uh, gigabyte of the RAM out of the 15 GB. Okay. So wait for some time so that it can finish the training. Thereafter, uh, we will start this lecture. All right, so our model has been trained. Now we can see that we have got 83% of accuracy. If you increase here number of epochs, it will, it, it will actually, uh, it will actually train for uh, better accuracy. You can try it on your computer. You can change its architecture, you can change its optimizer, you can change its batch size just to find out that which works better for you. Let's go ahead and see here uh, history. So history is stored in history.history. .history. Once you do that, you will be able to see here its history. You have here a loss function. Uh, in fact, it is actually loss here. You have training loss and uh, then you have here training accuracy. Then you have here a validation loss and you have here validation accuracy. You can plot these validation loss and validation accuracy uh, like here. You can say like the plt dot plot. In that you can say here history dot history and then you can inside that you can say here accuracy something like that and uh, thereafter you can do validation accuracy val underscore accuracy now if you just plot it you would be able to see here these accuracies here i'm just gonna give here the label this is training and uh, in this i'm gonna give here a label all right so for this one i'm gonna uh, uh, give label here as the validation accuracy all right thereafter you need to show the legion so i say here the plt dot legion and uh, then inside that i say here the train accuracy that's the training accuracy and then I say here these validation accuracy. Let's go ahead and run it. Now you should be able to see here. This is the training one and here you have the validation one. So since it's starting, you can see it clearly that validation accuracy is consistently more than the training accuracy. So your model is not overfitting in any way. Uh, it's, it, it is a little underfitting. That means you can do more number of uh, epochs training so that you can achieve even more better accuracy all right 
let's go ahead and do do the final prediction on the model but before that let me tell you how you can save your model it's pretty much simple you can save your model just by typing here uh, save model well obviously you cannot save your model by writing the comment there you need to write something like this model dot save and uh, then i say here cats versus dogs dot h5 now if you run it you would be able to see that your model is stored here then you can download your model all right suppose that you have your model then what you can do here you can read your model like this let's say if you want to do here a fresh prediction you store your model and then in other machine if you want on your local machine you can load your model something like doing this load model tf.keras.models.load model inside that you need to provide your model name here cat versus dogs dot h5 now your freshly model is loaded into model load let's go ahead and write a code to do the prediction here all right so i'm going to write here a code like import requests and then from pil import image and then from tensorflow dot keras dot preprocessing import image so this request if you remember in last lecture we had we had seen how you can read the data from your local directory and then you can make the prediction now in this lecture i'm going to show you how you can read the data from the internet and then you can do the prediction so i'm going to get here the image url i'm going to get here a data set url i'm just going to i mean i'm i'm going to get a dog url from here i go to the image and i'm just going to get any of these dog let's say you get this dog all right this is the dog you right click here and then you copy the image link from there you take the image link and you paste the your image link there all right you just remove this thing from here so that you can get your file at uh, as dot jpg do remember take only those url which are ending with either dot png or dot jpg once you have got this url then we need to read this url so i'm going to do here image image dot open inside this i'm going to call requests library thereafter i'm going to call a method get method and i'm going to read the url all right using the requests library and then i use here stream is equal to the true that means it's going to continuously read the image if it is large image thereafter i write here the raw that means it is going to get here a raw image so that we can open this byte image as the image library from the pillow library we are taking here so we will be able to read this as the image here thereafter i'm going to resize this image if you remember we 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 are reading our data set with the 150 150 all right that was the image size so we resize this and if you see this image you should be able to see this image here all right so seems like uh, this download is not happening there if i remove this one let's see what happens all right so this image is being downloaded this resize had some problem okay so in this resize we need to actually provide here a tuple otherwise it will not work so this 150 cross 150 is actually the image itself this is huge image actually its size is huge so i just resized it to 150 by 150 so it becomes something like this so we have got our image let's go ahead and convert this image as the array so i write here uh, image underscore array equal to image dot img underscore two array all right so 
this image dot img to array inside that i need to provide here our image now this has become here as the array once it becomes the array this is just single image so single image have two dimensions but our two dimensional convolutional neural network takes a three dimensional input so for that i need to again do here image in fact i need to do here img is equal to the np dot expand i need to increase its dimensions there expand dims and then i need to provide here image array and axis is equal to zero that's mean it is going to scale over the rows so it will add here additional dimensions without the changing the data once all these things are done then i need to divide our image by 255 so that we can normalize our image once everything is done then we are ready to do the prediction so these things are kind of the image pre processing once you are done with the image pre processing then you can do you can write here the prediction is equal to model dot predict and then img it's something like this once you have it something like this and if you do here the prediction you will be seeing its output like here all right so it has here 0.91 if you remember in last lecture i told you that it's a binary classification so either you you put a threshold at 0.5 if it is greater than 0.5 then we consider it as 1 if it is less than the threshold then we consider it as 0 so what we do now here we do like the prediction in fact we do here th is equal to 0.5 and then we say here the prediction greater than th if it is true then it's going to produce here a true and we need to provide here the int and if i do something like that it is going to convert that integer in the form of 1 so we got it something like this then i say that this is the idx the prediction idx actually that i say as the pred idx this is the prediction index in fact this is actually the class so you can say that this is prediction all right so what do you mean by if it is 1 that you can get from the train gen all right so i have here train generator and in that you have here class indices all right so in the class indices if it is 1 that means it is dog if it is 0 then it is cat so this one we cannot read like this what we are going to do here we are going to apply a list comprehension method here to get that so i write here as the items then i say here for k that's the key value in this and then i'm going to make it value and key so that this zero will be here a key and one will be key cat and the dog will be here value so i say these as the classes is equal to like this once all these things are done then i say here classes and then i'm going to get here the prediction index if it is like this you just run it you should be able to okay something is wrong here just let me see what happens okay seems like classes are okay but what is the type of these predictions that we need to check that okay it's the numpy array there all right that's the problem there all right if i get it here as zero then it is still a numpy array and if i get it again zero zero then it becomes there a float so what happens you see when we did in starting it was something like this so now what we need to do we have to convert this as zero and then again zero all right so we have to remove this bracket first thereafter we need to remove the second bracket so that's why we need to put zero zero that's the two times if i do like that thereafter if you check the type of this predictions then you will be seeing that as the integer all right this is the type as int so everything is done let's go ahead and copy this whole thing from there and paste it here 
and anyway this thing is already done if it is integer then you just put that here inside here and you just run it now you should be able to see there as the dog there okay so this prediction actually uh, from here and then run it again you should be able to get the correct result now it is saying dog let's go ahead and uh, bring everything here so that you can get everything here itself and if you run it it says that it is dog here let's go ahead and take some other image perhaps this image if we take and we just take this copy image link from there and we just provide this image link from there to here and if we run it we should be able to see here it as dog here let's go ahead and see for cat as well so i search here cats i'm just gonna take this image and i say here copy image link and then i'm just gonna replace this image with the cat image i should be able to see here classes as the cat all right so that's how you can do the classification i have shown you how you can save your model this is all about in this lesson if you have liked this video and if this video has helped you to build a machine learning model please like this video and subscribe this channel please do share this channel with your friends and the social networking sites thank you so much for watching i'll see you in next one